Oh, thank God it's Friday. I'm gonna get this update sent out and go home. And send. Uh-oh. Hey boss, I'm gonna take the rest of the day off. I'm suddenly not feeling that well. Okay, so that may have been a little overly dramatic, but that's kind of the point. This one thing that you've heard about on the news, CrowdStrike, is suddenly causing worldwide chaos and complete disruption of all of the vital infrastructure and systems that we use every day. And just like you, I've been watching the news and all the broadcasts and everything on YouTube where a ton of different people are explaining what happened in language that you may or may not understand. So what I want to do today is just kind of give you an explanation of what happened, how CrowdStrike and Microsoft caused worldwide chaos, shutdown of hospitals, emergency services, airports, all of our vital infrastructure, give you a better idea of what happened, what it's going to take to actually fix it, and how long that should take. And I've heard a lot of false information out there, so I want to get some stuff clarified for you. First of all, this was not a cyber attack, not ransomware, not some bad actor somewhere. This was probably one person sitting behind a keyboard, sending out an update, and that update file was not correctly tested before sending it out. Well, that begs the question, okay, who sent what and where? CrowdStrike is a very large cybersecurity firm. Businesses like Microsoft and Amazon and Visa and all the airlines and all of these major, major industries use CrowdStrike to help protect against data breaches. Now, unlike a regular antivirus that runs on your computer, sees a file that you download and compares it against a database of exact files, the way end user protection works for these large companies is they actually look for bad behavior as opposed to waiting for something to get installed on your computer. Now, because Microsoft uses a company like CrowdStrike for data protection, CrowdStrike has to constantly release new updates just like your antivirus would update your personal computer. In some cases, these updates are pushed out much quicker than expected because maybe they've observe some bad behavior and they need to get these systems patched. Well, what happens is, is CrowdStrike sends these updates out that you never see and they get pushed down to your computer and not through Windows updates, through something called OTA, over the air. In other words, if you're connected to the internet, when you first log on, that file is pushed down to your computer. The way your Windows PC works, if you have CrowdStrike enabled, is that file, that agent file, scans the system before Windows loads. And if everything passes muster, it continues to let you into Windows. Most of the time, most people have no idea that even exists. But the problem here, and this is what caused worldwide chaos, is that file, that update file, was corrupted or damaged. And it could have just been one line of code that was out of place. It could have been a colon instead of a semicolon in a line of code. But that one mistake, that one corrupt file, was enough to trigger Windows to say something is wrong and force a blue screen. And for most of you, if you've experienced this issue, it just reboots. It's called a boot loop. And that's all it'll do is it just keeps restarting and trying to load. And as long as that update file from CrowdStrike is on that system, it's never going to successfully boot. Now, the good news is for most people, most home users, you're not going to deal with this. You're not going to experience this. Your computer's going to turn on and everything's going to work. The reason being is because CrowdStrike is an enterprise endpoint antivirus solution using their proprietary software. It's called Falcon. Their Falcon antivirus program is basically the antivirus covering an entire company and then gets pushed down to computers where you may also have an antivirus program. But this is like more of a company-wide antivirus program. Think of it that way. So unless you work for a big company with managed IT infrastructure and enterprise networks and uh, network administrators that control everything you do, you're probably not going to experience any issues with your PC. And if so, there's nothing you need to do. Continue to use your computer as always. There's no danger. There's no security breaches or patches or anything like that that you need to do. If you've been affected by this, you already know it because when you tried to log on to your computer and you got this problem, it's an IT problem that your IT guys at work have to fix. Now, the problem with that is that it's not a hard fix. It only takes a couple minutes. But if you're talking about a company that maybe has three, four, five, six, eight hundred employees, thousands of employees, every single machine has to be touched 
and a file removed off that computer and then the computer boots just fine. But that's the problem. There's no way to automate this process because the only way you could automate it is to push down a new update. You can't push down a new CrowdStrike update if the computer never boots up and connects to the internet. That's why an IT guy has to touch each individual machine and naturally with large companies. And since CrowdStrike has 29,000 customers covering more than half of the Forbes top 500 businesses, it's going to take some time. Obviously, the more critical a machine is, like a server at your office or something like that, the faster those are going to get done. And obviously, the larger the IT staff, the faster they're going to get this done. But it's not something you can just automate. Somebody's got to physically go to that machine, boot into safe mode, and make all these changes. So the good news is, if you're not affected, go on about your day. The biggest inconvenience for you is going to be uh, you might run into some issues uh, if you have to travel, even though most airlines are getting back to good. Uh, if you have to do anything, that, I mean, whether it's ordering Starbucks or getting a rental car or sending something through FedEx, you may run into some infrastructure issues. But once they get all of their systems patched, that will slowly fade. My guess, and I could be completely wrong, is I'm thinking that we're going to still be experiencing these kinds of issues for probably another seven to 10 days before it's no longer a thing. Now, I could be wrong, but in my experience, something this big, which is basically what you would have seen in the year 2000 if that Y2K bug would have been a thing, you're seeing it now, 24 years later. So it's going to take some time. Trust your IT department. And if you know somebody in IT, Buy them a beer because I promise you those guys are busting their butts working 24-hour shifts to get everybody back up and running. So if you have somebody that you know that's in IT, cut them a break. And if you do have this issue and you don't have a large IT department, I did make a video on how to fix this problem in just a couple minutes. I'll put that up here for you. Hope you enjoy it and stay tuned for the next video.